Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another episode of Just In Time World. I would like you to consider two different scenarios. In the one, Jen comes into town, she buys a posy from a flower girl, and she goes to the town square to wait for her contact Jimmy. In the second rendering, Jen goes to town, she buys flower, uh, a posy from the flower girl, and when she goes to the town square, she notices a troop of players who are putting on the Lord's Hunt. She joins the crowd who have gathered around the players and laughs as the Lord falls off his makeshift horse. The players keep Jen amused while she waits for her contact Jim. You can see that of the two scenes, the one is a more immersive experience for the viewer, telling them what, Je what Jen is doing to keep herself entertained. And that is what I'd like to discuss today. I would like to discuss building the performing arts into your world to provide a more immersive experience to your readers or to your players if you're running a role-playing game. Before we get into it, please do like and subscribe to see more content like this. I release new videos every Friday. You can also connect with me across various social media, links down below and the link to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter, which goes out monthly and keeps you up to date about how my book is progressing. All right, let's get into it. So when I speak about the performing arts, uh, I'm talking about three broad categories for me. The first is the traditional singer-songwriter, the bard, the yongli, the minstrel. Now, you can... You can have that as one cat categorical role, called a bard, or all three of them, where they're synonyms, or you can split them up. An author who does this really well is Catherine Kerr, who, in her world, bards are sacrosanct, untouchable keepers of lore. And if you raise your hand to a bard, that's a hanging offence. Um, and then... The same protection does not apply to a young leer or a minstrel. So you get this sense of like two very different roles in societies, but both in the same category of performing art. Uh, then besides the traditional singer-songwriter combo, I also like the storyteller. The storyteller who acts all the parts and tells you an epic saga. The reason why I like the storyteller is because I suck at writing uh, songs and, and poetry and so on. So I would rather write a story which I can incorporate into my book or into my world than try and write a, um, a poem or a song. So just something to bear in mind if you also suck at writing songs. And then the other category of performing arts is that, that of the, the group of artists. And this is anything from a player's troupe doing a play, or a group of acrobats, or opera singers, or dancers. Any of those activities where a group tells a story through their, through their performing art. So, how do you include all of these elements, and where? Now, I like to divide the usage of performing arts into two sections the more passive exploratory part and the active plot affecting part. So in the passive exploratory part, you can give your users historical information. A great example of this is in the Belgariad, um, the character Belgareth the sorcerer tells a story during Aristide, which is a New Year's celebration, he tells the story of the creation myth of the world, which gives the reader all of that lore, while at the same time giving the lore to the other characters in the book, which makes the reader, which makes it feel less like an information dump and more like an actual part of the story. It keeps you immersed in the tale being told, while at the same time exploring the, his, the, the history of the world. Another really good example of this on a more localized way, exploring specifically a personality, is The Reigns of Castamere by George R.R. R. Martin. 
um, which is which is in his A Song of Ice and Fire. And what we learn through the reigns of Castamir is so incredible because we learn about Tywin's ruthless destruction of the house reign. Um, we learn that, you know, the, the Lannisters are serious business and that their threats are not to be taken lightly. Um, and, and we learn all of this through a single song. It is a great use of the performing arts to give you relevant historical information. Another thing that you can do through the uh, performing arts is you can give specific plot information in, in role-playing games or, or in your story uh, that you're writing. A very good example of this is actually from the Diablo games. Uh, stay a while and listen where Deckard Cain gives you the information that you need to defeat the Demon King through his telling of a story. So these are the exploratory elements of how you can use the performing arts. But you also have a more active use of the performing arts. You can use the performing arts to change people's perceptions of the world around them. And for a really, really good um, real-world example of that, you need look no further than Shakespeare. Shakespeare did an absolute number on Richard III. Um, he turned that poor guy into a child-killing hunchback monster for centuries. And, of course, the reason he did that was because Elizabeth I was Shakespeare's patron and her ancestors had won the war against Richard III, or the War of the Roses. And that was just, you know, the way it was. So he was vilified and uh, her part of the family was, was held up as the, the moral high ground, if you will. So you can use the performing arts to change people's perceptions. And my, uh, my main character, Louis, actually does this. Um, and he changes the perceptions of the town of Somfa, which you can read about in the first six chapters that I have released on my website. Um, but I won't say anything more about that because it does contain spoilers for the rest of the book. If you want a really dark example of how this has been used, uh, you can research the Nazi propaganda movies that they used, among other things, to justify their invasion of Poland. I will warn you, it comes with serious trigger warnings, so research at your own risk. Um, and a another way that you can use the, uh, the performing arts that's kind of a cross between active and passive usage is you can use it to recap your own story. You know, readers like to be reminded of things. And so do players. So I played in a role-playing game years ago now, and I played a bard, and as part of like my immersion in the story, I actually wrote our adventures as a saga. And when we brought that game to a close and we created a new game, but set in the same world, our GM actually took that saga and incorporated it into the world going forward. You know, our new characters got to hear the saga and perform it and so on, which made it a very immersive, rewarding experience. An author who, who does this exceptionally well is Jacqueline Carey. Um, the, her very first book, Shields Dart, the, the Queen's poet writes the Ysandrine cycle. And that, that cycle of poetry, which summarizes some of the events from the first book, is repeated um, and, and referred back to in the second book, the third book, all the way into the second trilogy and, and even the third tr trilogy in that world. And it is so well done. It makes you believe in that world. It makes you buy into this continuing story. Um, I highly do recommend Jacqueline Carey's work, Catherine Kerr's work, and, Death, and George R. R. Martin's work. Links to all of those below. The only thing that I will say is Jacqueline Carey's work comes with a not safe for work warning. In summary, um, you can use the performing arts to either explore your world's background uh, and or to actively further your plot or recap your own work. Uh, when you're building the performing arts into your work, don't just get stuck on the bard, the singer-songwriter. 
consider things like the player, the player's troupe, acrobats, opera singers, dancers, all of these elements from our world and, and the performing arts that exist here. Um, please do comment down below. Which authors do you think have seen this, uh, have used the performing arts really well? Have you included the performing arts ever in your world? Uh, if you're a role player, have you used the performing arts? Would you like to use the performing arts? And, and anything else that you think about world building. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next week for another episode of Just In Time World.